it did mention to put grease on this little joint right here, or actually oil in the manual. I decided just to use the uh, grease that came with the kit. No need to put oil on there. I think that the grease will do a little bit better um, an option because it's going from cast aluminum onto like a steel piece. Kind of think if you think MIP drive shafts, same type of thing. So gonna go ahead and start building here and probably time lapse the majority of this stuff. So uh, right off, we're gonna go ahead and start assembling this and getting some of the ball ends in and all that type of stuff. There's all different measurements here of different heights that you have to uh, put everything. So definitely um, calipers are always handy. So we have 7.5, 8.5, this one down here is 5.5, so I like to just set my calipers and just get going on building all this stuff. I already set this one to the 5.5 height, which is tightened all the way down. So we're going to go ahead and start building the turnbuckles. Um, they're very tiny and uh, very thin, but if you look at these, there's not really a mention of how to um, uh, undo them while on, they're on the car. So they have um, traditional threads on both sides. So if you did want to make adjustments, you'd have to take them off the vehicle and adjust them at that point. So kind of old school here, but these are super easy to build. I like to use um, just regular chapstick. Uh, to kind of grease up the threads. It doesn't break down the plastic over time. And then some good um, shock shaft pliers just to hold on to them right here. And we're going to go ahead and start building up these things. So uh, righty tighty on all of this stuff. Um, you don't have to worry about left hand threads or anything. First one, I think we're building this one to 13 millimeter gap. And the other one's like 54, so quite a big of a difference. So. I don't really worry about tightening it all the way down and then backing it off. And this is going to be kind of a show, uh, show piece, so I'm not really going to race this too much. Uh, definitely we'll do a first run, uh, but not uh, to the extent where I'm going to try and break anything. So this is a, a vintage re-release, and we're going to pay it its homage. So there we go. And then you do have to keep in mind that when you're building these turnbuckles, that um, there's a wide opening and a, a tight opening. So both wide openings have to be on the same side. So just FYI on that. Right there, yeah, I have to back it off about two millimeters now as I drop it. And this is so easy to adjust because you don't have to worry about left-hand threads. Couple turns on each side, and I think we'll be there. Let's see if that measures out, and it does. Perfect. So we got 113. This one's 54. I'm gonna speed it up now. but time to go ahead and assemble um, the whole front uh, left hand side now and so we have the little the caster block right there with the arm and then also the knuckle so we're going to go ahead and kind of slide all of this onto there it's a kind of a way that you have to slide everything on 
and it just goes flush with the outside right there. Giant uh, set screw right there. This thing it takes a 2.5 millimeter wrench to put this set screw in, but it is ginormous. And then like I said, this little caster block here uh, gets almost in line with the um, angle of the kick up. So right there you can kind of see as I lower it, uh, the angle of this is the same angle as the kick up. So that's good. We're gonna go ahead and tighten this down now since that is perfect. And now it's time to go ahead and install the um, turnbuckle. So right here, the short one, uh, this is the camber link. This just gets notched onto there and then just keep an eye on which side is the wide opening versus the narrow one. So that's the wide, this one's the narrow. There's not much difference. You just have to look at it to eyeball it. But uh, once you figure out which one is, they just snap right into place. No need to keep, you know, a one that has a particular notch. Uh, the, these are not directional at all. So that's on there now. A little bit stiff at first, but they'll break in pretty nicely. And then we have the steering link, which notated the wide opening. There we go. And finally, this guy here. There we go. Everything snapped in. Ah, this is beautiful. So, really quick look at that. Everything turned out good. Uh, a little bit of binding right now, but that'll kind of work out as those rod ends kind of uh, get some function. Uh, they're just a little bit stiff, but I think they'll work out. So, on to uh, the next few steps here. I think we actually grab the body now, the uh, bottom section of the body this thing right here and we start putting this thing together. So let me back up the camera. We'll start going forward. All right, so now we're starting on to the main kind of fuselage and what it appears to be upside down, this is actually up because remember the battery goes from the bottom, got the little Kyosho Japan labeling right there. I've already put this little aluminum piece here and this looks like it maybe like fits in somehow. I'm gonna have to verify that. And then also a body pin, which is also machined aluminum. I mean, just second to none as far as the parts on this thing, so pretty nice. Now, right here we are looking at the servo mount. Um, they are saying that if it's uh, any more than 27 millimeters, uh, you will have to shim it. I already test fit this one, and it fits in there pretty well, so won't need to shim this one, but the shims are included if you do need to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, like I've already checked the orientation of the servo, so right here we have the servo horn uh, or the mount for it. On that side, you can see the shims and whatnot, but we're gonna go ahead and screw this thing in and worry about wiring later, so. <laughs> and then on anytime I screw in a servo, I like to uh, do a star pattern to use just to make sure everything is even. So I'll do one side and then switch over to the diagonal side to do the other one before I start tightening everything down. So right here, and we'll go over to this side. These are nice uh, screws too. They're screwing into plastic, but they're coarse thread screws. So they go in with minimal effort and they'll stay locked in pretty well too. So they're not the typical fine threaded screws you can see right there. Focus, there we go, kind of coarse thread. So nice. And we'll just button up the last two and then just check to make sure everything's tight. The servo in this thing is, uh, like I said earlier, it's from this little EP starter pack right here. 100 bucks for everything, that, and that gets you going. You just have to add a battery, so not too bad, especially for a vintage rig like this one. Check tight on that, good. And last screw in. After this, I think we actually screw this down to the chassis rails so this thing is going together pretty quick here we are gonna have to build those shocks uh, pretty soon not not interested in building shocks right now it's kind of late in the day and i want to have a little break before i start building shocks tonight so ah that fits in nicely so we're looking for some cap head screws two by six or 2.6 by eight so it looks like we need just a couple of those and we'll go straight on in. Now we do have to lock these down as well with Loctite. So we're going into that 
aluminum chassis rail system. I have to try and eyeball this thing. There we go. So what are you guys building tonight or this morning or late at night or overnight? What are you guys working on right now while we're wrenching together? I'm building a Turbo Scorpion. <laughs> so are you building vintage, race, scaler, crawler, drift, nitro, boat, heli, drone? Do I say drone or is it multi-rotor? <laughs> so right there, that's all that's hold, holding that in for right now. I'm sure there's going to be other stuff coming. Yeah, it looks like that's a nice little add for the battery door. And we'll move on to installing the ESC and also the receiver next. So about ready to go ahead and start placing some of the electronics here. Now, of course, Kyosha does give you some double-sided tape, uh, just the red kind of uh, 3M stuff. I like to use this stuff. It's um, I think it's called their Extreme... Uh, clear or extreme silicone, something like that. It is clear. It's about, I don't know, 1.5 millimeters thick. It is somewhat uh, absorbing, um, but then the best thing about it is it comes off in one piece. So you don't have to sit there and keep scraping off whatever you're scraping off. So pretty easy to apply. I mean, just a matter of sticking it to the item that you are sticking down. I just use body shears to trim it off. Cuts pretty easy. You just have to cut fast. And that little piece right there, and that's it. And then just got to get it started. The one side there. And this stuff definitely sticks down excellent. I never had an issue where this has come undone. So there's that. And we're going to go ahead and stick this right down in the center right here, right where the manual says. mounting electronics you just want to make sure we're mounting it to the direction of where it's going so right here with the motor wires that's going to the motor we have the battery wire that's going to go down and then of course the receiver and the switch and we're just going to go ahead and mount this in this little corner right here just like the manual said that sticks right in there this can go down and then we'll worry about wiring just a little bit later all right, so went ahead and got most of the electronics situated, at least for now. I change my mind quite often with electronics because I want the, the cleanest look possible. This is actually extra messy for me. But what I do like about um, this particular car is it has all sorts of little access holes. So you can see the battery cable is going down to where the battery cable is. You can also see um, another section where um, there's a little cutout on the bottom here for the motor wires. Not sure how these motor wires are going to hang in here. I don't want them hitting the drive shaft, so I may just zip tie them up here, but I don't know what's going on back here yet, so we're going to kind of wait on that. Now it's time to um, go ahead and install the servo uh, linkage. So right here, the servo going all the way up here to the front. Kind of an odd design, but I've already assembled the um, actual uh, servo linkage, and you can see here there's the servo horn. I chose the 25-2 spline because that's what the Perfex uh, servo takes. Little rubber boot, which is nice. It keeps dirt out of the uh, little compartment in here. And then all the way up here to the just the standard rod end going up to the kind of bell cranks up here. So, or actually this little servo saver actuator. So. Um, it's pretty easy. I mean, you want to make sure that this thing is centered. I haven't moved it um, from the factory, so hopefully it was centered from the factory. If not, I'll have to adjust it, but this one's pretty easy to do because it's on the top of the vehicle. I just want to get a straight shot there and just eyeball. Now, there wasn't a measurement given for the length of this rod, so had to kind of eyeball it, but I have my steering outputs perfectly straight. This thing's perfectly straight, and this is dead on, so we're going to go ahead and attach it now and call it a day on this portion. Just a quick little snap right here of 
this. Probably not the best way to do it, but that's what I have handy. And then I believe it calls for a quick little screw going into the servo horn. Oh, not included. <laughs> what, what I did find on here was pretty funny. This is right here. Um, make sure throttle servo is in a neutral position. So a little uh, uh, transcript error or translate error with the throttle versus steering. So I thought that was kind of funny when I was just reading that. So I'm going to go grab a, uh, a 3 by 8 uh, cap head screw or button head screw and button that on down. So about ready to open up bag E and just make a note. Uh, mine had an extra screw that was attached like as, as an addendum. So they may have changed like a size or maybe they forgot a screw, not sure, but we'll have to read more of that into the instructions. So now we're going to start assembling the wing now. Uh, so right here, the wing assembly, the wing mount and all that stuff. And then just a few more steps. I mean, we have to build the cage, get the body on and uh, of course build those shocks. So still have a pile of red parts over there got to build the shocks and that'll be the last thing I do I'm not sure why I always postpone building shocks I think it's the I always do that for kits not sure why I guess it's just a lazy thing where I don't want to stop in the middle and set up a whole shock station to build the shock so anyways that's my methodology of that but let's go ahead and break into this bag e nice little top plate up here that goes I believe on the top of the um the buggy, so this thing goes right up here to house um, a bit of durability on the top. If you ever end up on your lid, and we're gonna crack open the rest of these screws. I still have screws left over in here from the shock build, so we're gonna kind of combine all of these merry screws over here so they don't get mixed up into this portion of the bag. Got lots of extra parts right now, so a little bit concerning, but we can always go back and kind of reference things, so. And time to cut open all these screws. So as you are seeing, I mean, what's your favorite builds? I mean, do you like building race kits or do you like doing upgrades for RTRs? I mean, what, what's your favorite type of um, vehicle building or wrenching? I mean, I like upgrades, that's, I have to be honest. That's, that's my my thing, I, I've always liked doing that, and that keeps me going in the RC hobby. So, I like seeing things improved on, and you know, what else can it, you know, what else can that slash 4x4 or whatever you're working on do? So, we'll get a little bit organized here, and uh, let's start building the wing. Just trying to build the wing mount now, and I mean, it's very small and it has that kind of flexible plastic, which is nice for a wing mount. Really nice uh, also is this little. I think 0.5 millimeter little shim and it has like a, if my camera will focus, there we go. It is super thin on one side, taper than the other, it's 0.5 millimeters and it actually goes to angle the um, wing so it has a little bit more uh, downforce on one portion of it. So I'm going to go ahead and include that, I mean, a little hairy kind of building this thing and I think I didn't drop the nut in here when I should have. So I may have to take something back apart. You can kind of see that little nut in here where I need to drop this other one in here. So let's see if I can get it in. Ah, it worked out. Cool. So they fit in there pretty nicely. And grab the wing here. Nice little plastic molded wing like you'd see in eight skill buggies. I mean, this thing is very small, I mean, maybe five and a half inches or so, uh, but, you know, great uh, durability portion right there. Fuck, fuck them. has actually went by now since the last portion of this video. I've actually already went ahead and started decaling up the body. I've already painted the interior of the body and then also the exterior and already laid decals, built the cage, 
added some lights. Uh, you'll see that in just a little bit, but I wanted to show the shock assembly. I've already assembled the rear shocks on to the Turbo Scorpion. Now these are of course the Optima shocks uh, from the uh, four wheel drive uh, vehicle. So a little bit longer shock than the original Scorpion. Super smooth as you can see right here. It uses 25 weight oil, both front and rear. A Little bit different uh, spring size, but they both use the same shock body and also the same shock shaft. So here's a few differences between the front and the rears. Now, of course, the front and rears uses different pistons, and also the fronts use an additional spacer to limit uh, the amount of travel on the shock uh, shaft. So with that, uh, make sure you're reading your owner's manual when you're assembling it, and it'll notate uh, right here on the front. It'll have that extra spacer. Uh, you have different um, A and B um, pistons for both the front and rear. You just have to kind of notate all this. And what I like to do is cut everything off the parts trees, lay it out front and rear, and kind of go from there. Now, Kyosha also gives you all the, the shock tools, comes in the kit, uh, you assemble those, and you're able to have shock tools to be able to tighten up the shock. So a little bit different uh, loading design. You actually load the oil into the shock body. There's no cap on the top, and then you load the cartridge into the shock. So a little bit different uh, than what we see in modern buggies. And then right here, once again, the rear has a longer spring uh, than the front, and just that's about the only differences. They also give you preload um, sizes, 1.5 on the rears, 2.5 on the fronts. Of course, the front has that shorter spring. That's probably the majority of it. So 25 weight oil, both front and rear. And let's go ahead and start building some shocks, but let's take a look at this thing really quick. Um, there's, like I said, been quite a bit of time. Now that original um, wing mount uh, actually mounted on top of the transmission and sealed up the transmission, which was pretty a clever trick. Just two bolts and it basically seals um, that transmission in there. You can kind of see it right on top there, but very, very cool design. I wasn't expecting that. I was kind of waiting. I'm like, wait, wait guys, uh, the transmission's still open and all of a sudden it was closed up. You can kind of see my wiring. It's still a mess. I I kind of threw this together quickly and followed the owner's manual to the T. I mean, between the placement of the receiver, the ESC and everything. So have the wires tucked up out of the way here with just with some zip ties for right now. And you can see other than that, added some decals, making it just like the box art. So I'm not deterring from that at all. Also mounted the steering linkage here. Uh, that was a pretty easy task. And then I've also already mounted the battery door and also the little pin right here to hold it all closed. So pretty cool design as well. It's a bottom loading battery. And other than that, I think we're about done. I'm missing a screw right here. I'm gonna have to check that out. Kind of odd. We'll have to uh, see if I miss something in this little tutorial right here. So, but right there, there's a look at it. Got the motor there, ESC, everything's pretty much ready to go. I got the body sitting right off to the side. You will see that before um, we finish this video, so stay tuned for that. And it's time to build some shocks up. So before we stock the, the or start the shock build, uh, make note of the spare parts bag. Now there's gonna be extra Eclipse in here for the shocks. You'll also have extra clear uh, seals for the shocks too. I blew through two of these uh, when I built the original Optima um, uh, last year. So be wary of that. Uh, there's extra seals in there. These seals are a pain in the little ass to put on these shocks. So uh, you will probably tear through one. I've kind of mastered my technique now. Um, I have did two perfectly now. We'll see if I can get two more uh, done perfectly as well. But make note of that extra parts in the spare parts bag if you happen to need it. I was thankful uh, realizing that when I built the Optima because out of four shocks, I tore two of the seals and uh, right here is an idea of what the seal looks like. If my camera will even pick this up because it's a clear seal um, and it's very, very small. Let's see if we can see that. Let's see it right there. It is super thin, super small, and there are four different little uh, indentations 
and I'll show you what that means in a little bit here. So let's go ahead and start um, building shocks. Now I do like to use uh, this Protec RC Premier Blue O-ring grease on all their O-rings. It doesn't swell the O-ring and keeps it very lubricated. And then also these Protec uh, shock shaft pliers come in handy when you're tightening down the uh, bottom eyelet of the shock onto the shock shaft. So try and have something of that uh, nature. If you don't have the O-ring grease, you can use silicon oil. It still works. However, it will kind of swell the uh, O-rings here after after time and give you a less than frictionless uh, setup. So uh, immediately, let's go ahead and start building up these shocks. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and start with the Eclipse. They're a pain, uh, but they tend to work in these this size of buggy. So I like to put the bottom E-clip on first. That way you have uh, something for it to kind of ride onto. So you have the bottom one on right there, and then it's a matter of adding on the piston. There's not really an up or down on these, and they're not taper. They're just uh, flat uh, uh, pistons. Now, when you're trimming these things off of the parts tree, make sure you clear all of that flashing off uh, to get a very smooth ride. So a uh, nice sharp X-Acto, and you're set. Then it's a matter of just adding on the top little E-clip here. And, you know, sometimes I get this on the first try. Sometimes I don't. So we'll have to see how well my skills are early this morning. And then a good set of needle nose. And you should be set. There we go. So that's a, a good set um, piston right there. And you want to just make sure it has a free... Uh, spinning, uh, nothing's bound down. You want this thing free as possible. No, no, no lateral movement, but you still want it free. All right, so we do want to go ahead and put the seal on the bottom of the cartridge right here. Now you'll notice that there's four sides that are flattened that don't have any type of threading. You want to make note of that, especially when putting on the uh, seal. Uh, the seal is flat, uh, but it has. Um, four sides of it that have like an indentation to go on those flat sides. So keep that in mind as you start to install this. Now, uh, you can uh, damage the seal very easily, but you wanna line it up first and then just start to put it on with your nails. Your, your nails will definitely help you uh, when installing this thing. Um, it's a tough little thing to um, get the hang of it first, but once you get it going, it's just a matter of dragging your nails uh, evenly um, down the sides that are not threaded. So uh, this, thing, this one's being a, a pain for me right now, mostly because I'm doing it on camera. So <laughs> that's how RC goes sometimes, especially in the YouTube world. <laughs> Patience is, is a virtue <laughs> as well. Um, but once we get it on, these things do keep pretty pretty well sealed. So uh, once you have it on, uh, that's what it'll look like. It's hard to see. I mean, this is such a, a silver item with a clear uh, seal. So kind of hard to make out, but that is on there now. It's all the way down to the bottom. Uh, should have no issues. And then you do want to go ahead and just rotate it. Uh, to where the um, indenti indentions of the seal are now in the thread, so it's not going to back itself off. So, But went ahead and did that. Let me get the other one done, and I'll be back to assemble the shocks. Now that the piston's on there, we want to go ahead and start building the cartridge here, and it's just a matter of following the instructions. Uh, we're going to supplement the oil for the blue O-ring grease. First thing is we're going to put on this little... Um, this deal right here that just kind of captures it inside the shock body. Now there's nothing that actually keeps everything in, but once you have this in, there's uh, the shock body on the inside has a little lip, and this is what that rides onto to keep everything compressed into the cartridge. So uh, I learned that uh, earlier. <laughs> so um, O-rings, I, I just put a little dab of this on my workbench here. You can't really see it, it's kind of off camera, but um, I put a big glob of it on there. Let it kind of impregnate on those O-rings uh, for time, and I need a rag. There we go. 
So these are two O-rings right on top of each other, which is a little bit odd. Usually you have some kind of plastic piece uh, in between. It works for Kyosho, so I guess it works for me. Last piece right here. So you can kind of see the cartridge uh, internals right there. And then right now we're going to go ahead and grab one of these cartridges. This goes on to here. So all nice and neat. We have the outer portion, the inner portion. And like I said, on the inside of the um, shock body is what's going to retain everything inside of that cartridge. So now it's time to go ahead and I like to go ahead and put on the um, the shock eyelet now. So it's already been kind of lubricated, so you don't need to add any more like a chapstick or anything to those threads. We're already much pretty much set to go. But with that, we do need to add that little um, uh, spacer right here to reduce the amount of travel for the front because the front and rear use the same size shock shaft. And then we're going to go ahead and start this thing on. And this is where those shock shaft pliers are going to come in handy. You always want to be wary of your uh, shock shafts. You don't want to mar them or nick them because that will cause uh, them to bind up. So we're going to go ahead and bottom this all the way out onto the threads as the instruction state. There we go. Perfect. And we have that part of the shock all set up. Now it's time to uh, fill up some oil and install all this stuff in and show you some of these cool shock tools. So the first shock tool you, you get is this right here, which is the one that I use the most um, just to tighten the bottom of the cartridge. And then you also get this little deal that has this little insert to go on the top of the eyelet. So this will hold this piece right here in perfectly. So now it's time to go ahead and insert the cartridge into the shock body with the oil. So I went ahead and pushed everything down to the shock piston. You see the eyelet right there. And we're gonna go ahead and insert this thing in and go ahead and start the threads. Not all the way. We just wanna go a couple threads in and we do want to go ahead and cycle the shaft on down. It should capture into that groove that's inside there. And you can already see shock oil coming up. Go ahead and down a little bit further and then all the way down. We're gonna go ahead and tighten this thing on up, just hand tight for right now. Let some of the oil spill out as you see. Slowly, I like to tilt it at a slight angle. And then we wanna go ahead and grab our rag, wipe off the excess for right now. Now we're not fully tight yet. We're going to uh, let that kind of breathe just a little bit. And we're gonna grab our shock tools now. So the bottom goes right into that little eyelet there. And then we have the top piece with that little metal deal that'll go right in here and it'll key in to that cartridge and we can get it tight. There we go. And that's all done. So there's still going to be a little bit of residual oil uh, that's you know kind of caught in there from where the, um, the eyelet was. But there we go. So it feels smooth. Nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and get the uh, shock collars on and call it a day on these and get these installed on the Optima. On the Scorpion, I should say. The Turbo Scorpion. So putting the eyelets on is a little bit backwards. You actually have to put this section on first. Uh, usually you would put the spring on first. So go ahead and set that in. Once that's in, you're ready for the spring. The spring goes on like so, all the way into the uh, bottom perch a little tight on there there we go so now you have a little section right there and we want to go ahead and grab this and pre screw this in we're going to grab our screw and a two driver screw this in about halfway as it starts to uh, seat in that way you're not doing it on the shock and trying to hold the spring one thing I don't like about these uh, retainers is it's kind of hard to get a really accurate uh, setup. I mean, maybe once they're on the car you can. These also come in both left and right. So you can put the left side on the left side, right on the right, and you can adjust the shocks uh, on the fly. So um, might be easier on the car, but uh, for right now we're going to move this on down and get it at that 2.5 millimeter spacing as I'm off camera. So 
This is an eyeball right now, 2.5, got my 2.5 driver. We're close, drop it down just a little bit. There we go. So 2.5, 2.5, there we go. That looks to be right, you can use calipers as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this thing on down. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You can see that already uh, it's staying on there um, with that amount, but we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down and Ah, oh, that's smooth. That's that's velvets right there, baby. So we're going to uh, mount these things up onto the Turbo Scorpion. So about ready to mount on the shocks now, and like I said, uh, there is a left and right. So right there, you can see the uh, head of the screw pointed up, eyelet I have straight, and this one you can kind of see right here, eyelet straight, and the head of the screw is right there as well. So we're going to mount those up just exactly like that on the. Uh, Turbo Scorpion. These are the little kind of um, ball ends that go on to the shock uh, standoffs on the top of the hoop here. Uh, these just go straight on. Shock goes on. We're going to mount the top first. And just a quick little five mil or five and a half millimeter nut. We'll get it started on here. I picked the wrong driver. And go ahead and seat this all the way into the end of the little ball in there have just plenty of room to kind of move around that's perfect I'm gonna make sure it's not binding on anything and then simply after that we'll go ahead and snap it into the ball end uh, that's on the underside right there of the shock or of the arm and just a quick little snap of some pliers there we go there's that side Oh, beautiful. <laughs> this is so smooth. It's just amazing how well these uh, Kyosho shocks work. I mean, they're, they're so vintage, but they just work. It's just absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and check out the other side here. And then I can't wait to show you guys the body. The body turned out well. I, I spent three hours uh, getting that body all up and running. Uh, you will be amazed. It turned out excellent. Uh, painted up with just some uh, uh, white... I think Sprint White from Pactor is what I used. And that's what's so nice about the Kyosho kits is you can just add a, a, a plain color and it gives you all the additional colors right here. Like you see the blue uh, right over here on the wing. It uh, gives you all those extra colors, the blue, the red, the yellow. Gives it that vintage look. Getting this one on now. I'm pretty happy with the way this thing has turned out. This thing is uh, vintage yet uh, able to handle some serious power. Although I'm running brushed. <laughs> and last snap of that. Let's test this guy out. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. It's like the perfect spring rate and the dampening is just beautiful. It's just amazing how that these little cantilevered uh, little trailing arms work on these things. Or I guess I should, this is like an, a leading arm. Eh, who knows? Let's go ahead and get the body on. I'll show you the body and we'll wrap this thing up. So as you see, we have mounted the wheels and tires on. I have not glued them yet and I haven't put the inserts in, just did it so it looks like a actual buggy right here. And um, as far as uh, the EP starter pack, what a great experience. I just powered everything up, reset the servo horn and everything functions right out of the box. So for 99 bucks, uh, you can pretty much have your Turbo Scorpion or your Optima or your Tomahawk Beetle up and running, got brushed power, you got everything inside one box. You just have to add your own vehicle battery and four AA batteries. So you can even go with a very inexpensive, you know, LiPo with a Dean's style connector and you're ready to go. You can even go nickel metal hydride if you want to. It does come with a, a um, Tamiya connector that goes from a uh, Tamiya connector or Molex to a uh, Deans if you would like. So, but it does come with a Deans on the ESC ready to go. So, pretty cool, and it is lipo compatible as well. And you can just uh, do a little bit of switching right here on the back of the receipt or the ESC to set that up. So, uh, overall, went very well with all the assembly and the install of the EP starter pack. Now, what is cool is the body and you can kind of see it coming in right there on the far right, but uh, this is how everything turned out. 
Um, what, a, what a beautiful body. Now, I did have a very inexpensive set of LED lights. I think they're from Yeah Racing. I'm going to try and have a link in the video description for you guys. But um, this right here took about three hours to uh, get all done up. So I painted it with just some Sprint White uh, from uh, Pactor Paints and um, added the decals. Lane decals is a work of art. Uh, I... I'm not good at it. Uh, this was my trial and error side. Uh, you can kind of see a couple of bubbles here and there, but that's okay. This is the better side. Um, I have a little nick there, but a little bit less bubbles. Uh, really tough getting into some of these areas right here. You can kind of see the decal kind of coming up right there, but not perfect, but from afar it looks great. Look at that. So added the uh, cage, uh, the light kit, which is all optional. You don't have to mount the light kit. You don't have to mount this top piece either. Uh, that's all optional. You can mount that or not. The LED light kit is extra. I think it was like $8. So it came with um, four uh, clear LEDs. It did come with um, uh, two reds for like a rear tail light, but I just have it all zip tied and taped up under the body here. And then this simply just plugs straight into your receiver and gets power off of it. So it uh, works pretty good. I do have one light out. This one is not working right now for some reason. So I'm gonna have to tear into it to find out what exactly went wrong. May have to replace the bulb. We'll have to see on that. So, but uh, let's get this thing mounted up to the Turbo Scorpion chassis and see how it looks. Well. There it is. That is the Kyosho Turbo Scorpion all built up for you. Now, I know I didn't show it step by step. There's lots of different ways that people do things. This is the way that I built mine. Hopefully, I've shared some pretty good information with you. Now, I did take you through some of the tricky parts, like definitely those shocks and building some of the other tricky things on this vehicle. Uh, painting up, I do have tutorials on how to paint and then laying decals, that is just a work of art I have not mastered quite yet. Well guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this very long video. I'm estimating uh, prior to editing, this is gonna be at least an hour long video. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it while you have been wrenching. I wish you luck in your RC endeavors and I will catch you on the next one. That's it for now guys, over and out.